Jai Hind, Jai Bharat to all my children, those who are present in my class today. I am Tulika Pathak. I'll be taking your online English class. Today, I'll be teaching you about a small girl and you would enjoy the story as many of you sitting there back at your home, you would relate yourself with those experiences which the small girl Vanda shared with us in this story. The story is in two parts, the 100 dresses part one and 100 dresses part two. Children, Wanda Petronowski, she came from Poland and she came to America. She went to school with other American students. But she was different from the other American children or other children. She was a bit introvert. She did not laugh loudly like the other children used to do. She used to keep quiet and always used to take the last rows of the classroom to be unnoticed. He used to get into the trap of the bullies which usually we see in the classroom. But the author here has not used the word bullies but here we find we would find so many episodes where this little girl, this little Polish girl will be bullied. Now everybody used to tease her in the class children. In the anger she claimed of having a hundred dresses and 40 pairs of shoes at home. She was very determined and showed her determination in the classroom. She never used to open up with others. So this two stories are dedicated to Wanda Petronowski. We'll start. Let us know what more we can know about Wanda. So for that, you have to come with me to the PPT, which I prepared for you people. And I hope you would enjoy it. Yes. First, we'll start with the introduction. The lesson, the 100 dresses, part one, is about a girl named Vanda who claims to have 100 dresses. Her classmates made fun of her because what she claims is in the contradiction to the fact that she was always seen wearing the same dress. Her classmates found her name to be funny. It was because everyone had easier names than Wanda Petronowski. Her name was different because she was a Polish immigrant who had come to an American town with her family children. She was poor and did not have many friends. She was quiet and was always seen sitting in the corner of the classroom. As I told you why? To be unnoticed from the mass. The truth about the hundred dresses unveiled when she submitted her hundred drawings in a drawing contest. They were the same hundred dresses she used to talk about all of them were immensely beautiful. 
children i tell you you would like the story now is the author of the story l sar esther l sar esther from 1906 to 1988 el bosser was a children's book librarian for many years she launched her writing career with the publication of the muftahs in 1941 two of her books about the muftahs are Newbury Honor Books, as is the Hundred Dresses. Now, why are we so much interested in this chapter? There are some objectives. What are those objectives, children? It would enable you all, the students, to share your personal experiences related to discrimination. on the basis of region caste gender etc so nowadays we don't face such discriminations in the classroom but then also there are many discriminations we face you are ma'am's favorite isn't it this does discrimination the children are discriminated nowadays with this you are sir's favorite come on nobody will ask you for the homework isn't it the other children do bully saying all these things or oh my god you are a good speaker okay you can you can attract the attraction of the teachers so oh it's you because in my class i had seen children bullying a child who used to regularly help me she used he used to assist me in running the dg board you know rather i should say he taught me and other children started bullying him so nowadays the bullying it has changed the discriminations have changed it's not that bad as it used to be ages back nowadays we are children you people are very positive you count everyone in equal eyes except those ah you are ma'am's favorite you are teacher's favorite all right except those comments you don't discriminate your friends do you i don't think so the discriminations ages back were made due to the region caste gender also ladki kya bolegi isn't it but nowadays in my class my girls are more powerful than the boys yes so it would help you to enable to express yourselves in grammatically correct language it would enable the learner to extrapolate from the given text you would try to explore from the given text to sensitize the student to the feeling of an individual to enable the students to think of an alternative ending of the story now children there's a request to all of you now i'll be doing uh, i'll be going on explanation uh, explaining the story but i want you people uh just before the class ends please if you can write any alternative ending now if you uh, miss doing it you can uh, write it in the whatsapp uh, group message also that what is the alternative way of ending you may uh, you want in the story to enable them to use new words and phrases in their own language right now every chapter every poem it has a moral and what the moral does it helps us to shape our inner self our character 
the hundred dresses conveys about a social discrimination children it is one of the ills of the society which has an adverse impact on the people but nowadays keeping the finger crossed i say that we don't have such discriminations in very remote places you may have it the cases may be one or two but nowadays that discriminations are not there all the children they are with positive attitude and they are all same all right it is one of the ills of the society which has an adverse impact on the people the story is about a polish girl who is a polish girl children the person who belongs from poland who faces discrimination when she goes to school why did el besor esther write the hundred dresses in 1944 she wrote the hundred dresses to atone for her silence when her classmate was bullied as an adult once she had become a writer she figured that the only thing she could do was to write her story her daughter helena also a children's librarian said in an interview with npr so this was revealed by the author's daughter what is the significance of the title the hundred dresses the title of the chapter is hundred dresses because the chapter talks about a girl who has been teased by her classmates as she wore some the same dress every day she made hundred of dresses in the drawing competition to show how many dresses she have including the blue dress which she wore every day Is the hundred dress a real story? The hundred dresses is based on a true story, children. It's a real episode, as the author describes having the witness a similar situation at her own elementary school. She wrote her account of the young girl's mistreatment as Maddie wrote her letter to try to make amends for what had. happened now we'll start the hundred dresses summary children are you enjoying are you there with me or please pay your attention children here to the explanation the hundred dresses is a story based on the true experiences of the author about a girl who is teased by her classmates because she is different or she was different wanda petronoski a girl who comes from a poor part of the town is only student in her class with a funny polish name in our times you know children people used to tease taking the names also children yeah i used to get bullied taking the names also i remember i want to share one thing my name you know my grandfather uh, when i took uh, admission in my school uh, when i got admission in my school she, he wrote my he made me write my name as kumari tulika ganguli and i remember you know when i'm teaching you about vanda I remember how the children used to bully me with my name Kumari Tulika Ganguly understood so this discriminations were really there in the schools in the society but now you feel good and i say that you people are good with positivity you never go for such mean teasing to your friends Yes, you people also tease. I hear many things, but not in such a way. Wanda Petronoski, a girl 
who comes from the poor part of the town, is the only student in her class with a funny Polish name. She is always quiet. She always wears the same faded blue dress to school every day. Although she claims she has a hundred dress, dresses at the home all lined up in her closet. The story is told from the perspective of one Wanda's classmate, Maddie, who is the best friend of the main player in the daily taunting and teasing. After Wanda is absent for a few days, her classmates learn that her family has moved away to the big city where they will not be mistreated for being different. Now, these things happen. Yes, one thing, uh, such bullies are not there in your classrooms because you are in a, in, uh, with all positivity. And maybe with the change of time, the change of place, things have also changed. But with Wanda, when she was in a small place where people used to tease her, but when she went to a big city, people, in big city, nobody cares who is going where. So, she was away from all those teasing and tauntings. Now, Maggie, Maddie begins to wonder about the girl she and her friends used to constantly tease and realize that she knows very little about her. She begins to wonder why they started teasing her in the first place and is overcome with the guilt for making fun of her simply because she is poor and has a funny name and is different from them. Maddie knows that she should have stood up to her friends and defended Wanda. She feels guilty for not speaking up, for standing by and allowing her friends to tease Wanda. Maddie and her friends later discovered that Wanda is a very talented artist and that her drawing of 100 beautiful dresses has won the school's art contest. The girls realized that they misjudged, misjudged Wanda and feel incredibly guilty for never being believing her stories of her 100 dresses. In the end, the girls write a letter to Wanda hoping to make amends and they are pleasantly surprised by her willingness to forgive. Now we will go to the detailed summary. Now the detailed summary, I arranged it according to the flow of events, incidents in the chapter. The headings are synchronized according to the occurrence in the main chapter. I have synchronized it according to the occurrence in the main chapter. Right children? Now, Wanda Petronowski in the class. Wanda Petronowski sat in the seat next to the last seat in the last row in row, room number 13. Only rough boys, means naughty boys, who didn't get good marks sat there. It was this corner where there was most scuffing of feet and most roars of laughter when anything funny was said. It was also said the corner where one could find most mud and dirt on the floor. It's very quiet and lonely. Nobody knew why she chose to sit in the last row. Perhaps she came from a place Boogings Heights. It was the place 
where poor immigrants lived. Her feet were usually covered with dry mud. Nobody really thought much about Wanda when she was in the class. Today, she was not in her seat, but no one noticed her absence. Wanda Petronowski, an object of fun. Here, the schoolmates thought of Wanda only when she was outside. Only outside the school, they waited for Wanda to have fun with her. After two days, Peggy and Maddie noticed that Wanda was not there in the class. Peggy was the most popular girl in the school. She had pretty clothes and her hair was curly. Funny names. Wanda Petronowski was rather a strange name for the children in room number 13. They didn't have names like that. They had names easy to say like Thomas, Smith or Ellen. Wanda didn't have friends. She came to school alone and went home alone. She always wore a faded blue dress. It was clean but never ironed properly. Peggy making fun of Wanda. Peggy would always try to make fun of Wanda in a most courteous manner. She would ask, how many dresses did you say you had hanging up in the closet? Wanda would answer, a hundred. Then Peggy would ask in teasing but in a polite manner. All silk? I bet. Wanda would reply that they were all silk and of all colors. Then before Wanda had gone very far, all the girls would burst into shrieks and peals of laughter. The only dress Wanda wore was a blue one. What a story, they would say, meaning that she was telling a lie. They would again ask Wanda teasingly, how many shoes, Wanda? Or how many shoes? Wanda would reply, 60 pairs. Maddie was different. Maddie was not like Peggy. She didn't like this business. Which business? Of teasing. The business of teasing? Wanda. Of asking Wanda how many dresses, shoes and hat she had. Maddie was poor herself. She often wore old clothes usually given by someone else. She felt embarrassed when Peggy questioned Wanda in a mocking polite voice. She wished Peggy would stop teasing Wanda. Petronowski, she pictured herself in the school yard, a new target for Peggy and the girls. Peggy might ask, her where she got the dress that she had on. Maddie would have to say it was one of the Peggy's old dress that she was wearing. Drawing and coloring contest. Maddie began to wonder who was going to win the drawing and coloring contest. For the girls, this contest consisted of designing dresses. Peggy was the favorite as she drew better than anyone else in the room. Everybody thought that Peggy would win the prize. The next day, when 
they entered the classroom they found there were drawings all over the room there must have been a hundred of them they were all lined up miss mason announced the winners she told them that one girl drew 100 and tops all different and beautiful colors she declared that wanda petronowski was the winner of the girls medal wanda had been absent from school for some days and was not there to receive the prize miss mason asked the children to file around the room quietly and look at wanda's beautiful drawings peggy and maggie maddy noticed that particularly two blue and green dress which wanda used to talk about were displayed there now coming to the end of the chapter the most interesting and the most uh, loving part which i enjoy is the new words twisted moved change it after the crash the car was a mass of twisted metal understood the usage faded dim colored the sun had faded the curtains her smile faded when she heard the news now velvet soft cloth my dress is made of velvet the cushion covers and curtains are of real velvet understood understood the usages also hitching means catching she hitched up her skirt and waded into the river teasing troubling they are teasing me i used to get teased about my name so children new year words you have to learn you don't have to write it in your notebooks but you have to learn and use it in your write ups in your notebooks and uh or your in your exams right so with this i end the chapter the 100 dresses part 1 the next day i'll take up the next chapter 100 dresses part 2 yes so we are done with the chapter i think you have enjoyed you could relate to many incidents which you have experienced in your classrooms i also shared one or two of my experiences right children so always enjoy the class and always interact with me that would help to make a literature class more and more interactive and interesting so children you will be doing your ncert textbook questions in your a notebooks index should have a mention of 100 dresses part 1 then you would write the textbook questions right extra questions i'll be sharing in a pdf right children so till then have a nice day